What's going on everybody? I'm YouTube's ProPJN. Welcome to this video. Now, I did an interview uh, with a newspaper magazine uh, style thing over in the US. So they Skyped, the journalist Skyped with me and was uh, asking me questions over Skype. Now, I did tell him that I was filming and he requested that I don't show his face or use his voice. So I want to respect his wishes. So what's going to happen is that you guys will see the question pop up on screen that I was asked and then you will see my answer. Oh, sorry. You will see my answer. Um, it was an interesting interview. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. But um, it's just something a bit different that I don't usually do. I don't really do interviews all that much because I don't feel like I'm kind of important enough or anything to kind of do interviews. But for this one, I kind of just said yes impulsively, forgot all about it, and then it kind of happened. So uh, enjoy, I guess. Uh, hopefully this answers a few questions that you guys have for reading your comments and a bunch of other stuff. And it's also just a, a way to kind of chill out and hang out a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoy the interview. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with some more content. Bye, guys. Hey. No, no problem. Thanks so much for making the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, let's jump into it. Awesome. God, so many people ask me that and I wish I had a good story for it. And I think if I if I knew that I was uh, going to do stuff like this, getting interviewed, I, I think I would have come up with a better story. But I don't have an interesting story. Uh, everyone used to just call me Popey in in high school. And when I was coming up with the channel, that was kind of in the back of my mind where I was like, well, everyone calls me Popey, so I might as well stick with that. But people called my older brother at high school Popey as well, so I didn't just want to be Popey. Originally, it was going to be Popey JR for Junior, and um, when I was typing that on the keyboard, I wrote Popey and I pressed a J, but I accidentally bumped the N when I was do when I uh, hit the J. So J N kind of was there, and I was like, you know what, that kind of works. So I've kind of just kept it as Popey J N. So. I, I guess it's because of a typo that I have the name. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I, w I was very sad uh, during that time. There was a lot of stuff uh, in my personal life that was kind of slowly starting to go wrong and fall to pieces. So I, I felt like I needed something to take my mind off of all of that. So, um, in a way to do that, I create, I wanted a creative outlet. And at that time I had just been introduced, uh, by one of my best mates, uh, to YouTube and to PewDiePie and to Buskus. So I was looking at these people and I was like, ah, oh, man, that's such a cool thing that you can upload stuff. You know, whether it's uh, sketch comedy or gameplay or whatever it may be that you're interested in as a bit of a creative outlet. So I kind of just chose that to go down that path uh, as a bit of a creative outlet to keep my mind off of everything that was going on. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of how I got started. Yeah, yeah. Um, over time, it uh, it took many forms. I remember at the at the start of it, I was um, in a very bad place, as I said earlier. Um, and being in that bad place, I was experimenting a little bit with drugs, drugs and alcohol during that time. And during that, I kind of got to meet and hang out with other people that were going through similar situations. And we were all very depressed and, and going through a lot of different things. And it kind of hit us one night. We were all sitting around, drinking hard, doing a, a, a fair amount of, of, of drugs. Um, and we kind of all came to the conclusion, we're watching uh, the second Jackass movie. And we were all like, we should do that. 
with no real pretest. I don't remember who it was that suggested it, but someone suggested somewhere that we should do something in the similar style to that. And we kind of picked up the ball and ran with it. So we created the first thing on the old channel was a stunt show that we created, which uh, was Maniac Men. And that kind of, it, it got us a bit of a following doing those episodes. So I think there's about a season's worth of content on there, like 12 episodes or something. Um, and then we filmed a TV pilot for one of the networks over here in Australia. So we filmed for Channel 7. And they very wisely decided that it, it was not going to be appropriate for an, a TV audience during prime time to watch. And no one was really going to be invested in it in the same way that they were in the mid 2000s when Jack Ass and the Dudesons and Nitro Circus and all that were kind of taking off. So that got shut down very quickly. Um, which was good because we were not in the right frame of mind to be doing that kind of stuff. And then after a six month hiatus, I got, uh, myself clean and sober. Um, and I came back to YouTube and started gaming. Again, uh, as I said earlier, looking at people like Tabuscus and, uh, and PewDiePie and even Markiplier, I think Markiplier had just started up at that time in 2012. And I think Jack was about to start up as well then. So like all these people were kind of starting up their channels and focusing it around gaming. And I was like, well, you know, I've been gaming since I was a kid. I mean, the first game I ever played was you know, uh, the 007 GoldenEye with my brother on Nintendo 64. So big gaming fanatic all through life. So it kind of made sense to me that I would do Let's Plays and kind of have that, uh, the gameplay and the, the commentary over top. So that's kind of what I started doing in 2012. And then ever since then, I've, I've kind of been, been doing that. But I, I, I think uh, in terms of evolution as of the content, I think uh, a major point that I also needed to hit upon here was uh, my struggle with trying to fit into a certain demographic. I think it was 2015 and 2016 where I was really frustrated. My channel was not it was doing well in terms of subscribers. People were subscribing, but it wasn't doing well in terms of views. People had kind of started falling off of my channel. So it's, I kind of panicked and went into panic mode and tried to correct it by shifting, uh, my content around a certain demographic, which is where I started doing, you know, kid friendly series, like your toy stories. I played, I think it was toy story two or toy story three. Um, to try and get a kid audience. But I was also still doing stuff for the teenage audience and the young adult audience as well, which was a bit more risky and a bit more, you know, a bit more uh, cuss words and, and all of that. So I, I went through a phase where I just had this weird panic of uh, trying to fit into certain demographics. So... I think in terms of evolution, that's that's most of my evolution is going from a stunt show to gaming. And then once I had the gaming kind of locked in, I have had a panic moment and tried to shift demographics. But I don't think shifting to a kid friendly demographic, that's not that's not my jam because I, you know, I want to play the games that I want to play. And if I was a kid friendly thing. I wouldn't be able to play half of the games that I play on the channel, like um, your GTAs and uh, even your even your Detroit Become Humans, which I played last year, which I loved, and you know uh, Red Dead Redemption. All the all these games just become off limits if you're trying to get a kid friendly audience. That was probably a longer answer than you wanted, but <laughs> that's the evolution um, of the channel.
Yeah, it's it's been interesting because I started in 2011. So when I started in 2011, even then, like the platform had this, uh, I'd say this kind of spark in it, this kind of creative spark where people still look down upon it quite a bit where they're like, oh, that's the, that's the website with the cat and dog videos and stuff like that. So to be a creator on YouTube then was still a very weird thing. I mean, it, technically it probably still is now to, it, it, it kind of is now to still be doing this, to be talking to cameras and stuff. It is weird, but it's kind of made it into the mainstream now. But the big difference I notice is that in 2011, it was very creator orientated. So YouTube as a company were just so invested in their creators. Um, and this was at the time where they just, uh, launched the AdSense program and so many other things where as a creator, you were finally starting to feel like, Oh, there's a place where we can do this. There's, you know, they've, they've kind of got all of our backs and they're wanting creators. They're wanting us to be creating entertainment for an audience. And now in 2019, I've seen the pendulum swing completely the other way where it's become very advertiser orientated. So instead of being focused on creators and people that are genuinely trying to create good stuff, I've seen it now shift into, you know, the Tonight Show or uh, Ellen DeGeneres or, you know, all these, all these big corporate entities that have made it onto YouTube, kind of now the big favorites, you know what I mean? So like it's the, it's a less focus on creators and it's more on the big corporate enterprises and also on their sponsorships. If you look at the trending page, I think six months ago, it was like 90% advertisers and then 10% were creators that were doing really cool stuff. And like, I'm hoping that it's going in a way where it's going to shift back into promoting creators and being a very creator orientated space. But I think only time's going to tell whether that's, uh, whether that's going to happen. Ooh, favorite type of video. Well, as I said, I've experimented with different formats and different, uh, different kinds of videos. I love the gaming videos. I absolutely love the gaming videos. I think that's why I've stuck with the gaming videos for so long is because I have a genuine interest in gaming. So it makes sense to me to kind of be doing the gaming videos. Um, in terms of what type of gaming videos, I love when I'm collaborating with other people, with my friends and everything, because it's a weird thing when you're doing it by yourself. It's, this is a, it's a weird thing to be posting stuff on YouTube by yourself, because while you're playing the games, which I don't think a lot of people really understand, while you're playing the games, you're also thinking around in your head, what can I say? What can I add? Or if you have any thoughts at all, like you're trying to basically just word vomit as much as you can and getting all your thoughts out there uh, about the game while playing the game, which is a really unusual way to be playing video games. You know, to be speaking out loud, usually most people are sitting here kind of just playing silently to themselves, you know. So the fact that you have to speak out loud to yourself and uh, like I have cameras set up now recording this interview and like I'm looking straight at the camera now so to be talking to the camera and trying to articulate is really weird still it really is but um so collaborating with friends and other creators it's kind of it puts the pressure off a small bit because you're just having a genuine conversation with people over the internet and it kind of flows a bit more better but um I think the other thing that I'm a fan of, um, I'm a fan of what my audience is a fan of. If my audience really likes stuff, like at the moment, they're really liking the voice impressions and stuff that I do. So like, I love to do fan service and kind of give them what they want, but I still like that healthy mix 
between what they want and what I want. Because otherwise, if I'm doing something that I want all the time, they're not going to be interested. But if I'm doing stuff that they want to see all the time, I'm going to be burnt out like that, you know, which is not helpful for anybody. So you need to walk that fine kind of balance between what they want and what you want to see. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's the big one that I enjoy um, is the interaction with the community. That's a big part of it for me. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm always in the comments of my videos. I'm always interacting with the community. And the reason for that is if you look at YouTube compared to traditional media, right? Traditional media had like the Nelson boxes and everything where they're trying to see what people like and target content towards that. With YouTube and stuff, if I post a video within an hour, I've got instant feedback from the audience who are watching it right now. So I'm getting instant feedback. I'm seeing what they like, what they don't like. And that for me and for any creator on the platform is really valuable information because it's like having those Nelson boxes at your fingertips in a way, because you're getting the instant feedback of what they like, what they don't like about it, how you can alter your content around what they like while keeping it interesting for yourself, as I said in the previous question. But I also like it for a different reason, which is I've made a connection with an audience kind of around the world. You know what I mean? Like that's the cool thing about social media and YouTube in general or any streaming service like Twitch or DLive or anything that I do is that you make an instant connection with people that are like-minded around the world, you know? And I've got uh, my email address, which is really meant to be a business email address, but I always, like every day I've got emails from people that watch my content and they share stories with me. You know, they share mental health struggles and everything like that. And to be able to have that impact kind of in someone's life where they feel like they trust you and uh, feel like they can open up like that to you, that's a strong thing, man. That's a really strong power. So I don't take that for granted. Um, And I always look at people that don't interact with their comments or with their community and people that turn off the comments and turn off that interaction with the community. And I'm kind of like, well, why, why wouldn't you interact with them? Like they're the ones giving you watch time. They're the ones that are kind of putting you where you are, but more than that, they're giving you instant feedback on what you're creating. So to shut that off, I I find that disrespectful in a way. And I always want to be kind of respecting the audience, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that make or break you on this platform. Yeah, well, in two years, we're actually, I'm celebrating 10 years uh, in 2021. So I'm celebrating 10 years in 2021 of being on YouTube as a whole. I created my first uh, YouTube channel in 2011. So it's, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I actually thought that this year was going to be my last year. Um, just because I didn't know whether I was still going to be enjoying what I do, but I'm kind of more passionate about it now than I've ever been. And I think the audience have picked up on that where I'm creating stuff that I'm genuinely interested in. I'm editing, editing them in a way that I think uh, is really entertaining. And I I think last year we hit on my channel a bit of a, a, a low moment, which I think even the audience picked up on, where the editing was half-assed and very sloppy. Um, and now I feel like we are where we should be in terms of editing and creating the content that we want to see. So... I'm hoping that I'm still going in two years, but the reality for me is that being the small creator that I am now, 
you know, I left behind a channel that had 15,000 subscribers and I've now got 160 or 150, somewhere around that subscribers. So I'm small potatoes. You know what I mean? Like, so realistically with the landscape of how YouTube is now, I'll probably be around the same number of subscribers that I am now. And I'll probably still be doing the same kind of content that I'm doing now. And the only reason I said that I'm going to be around the same amount of subscribers that I am now is because it's so hard nowadays to make that connection with an audience. In 2011, when I started, it was so, it was a lot easier to make an, a connection with an audience. But now because the platform is so mainstream and so overpopulated, it's so hard to make that connection now. So I, I feel like I'm going to be at the same level that I am now, but I'm kind of okay with that because I, I know that I've got a dedicated group of community that are going to stick by me. So I, I think I'm going to be still at the same, but I'm going to be satisfied with what I'm making is what I feel. Oh God. Yeah, there's heaps. Um, you know, your typical ones like PewDiePie or Jacksepticeye or Markiplier, people like that. Even like Toby Games or Toby Turner, I really want to do a collab with him at some point. I really think he'd be fun to just game with for a session. In terms of music, like I used to be a music producer over like for a band over in the in the US. So like even to like work on something with Gabby Hanna or someone who's crushing it right now. Like she is, I think in terms of YouTuber music at the moment, she's kind of leading that path. So even to like get to collaborate in a small way on like something that she's doing would be a dream come true, I think. So uh, those those are kind of a handful of people. There's a, a ton that I want to eventually and hopefully you get the chance to collaborate with, but I, I think the chances of me collaborate them collaborating with them is is very slim to to none. Just because of size difference. I'm probably not the I'm probably not the best person to be asking that question because I'm still as I said, I'm still small potatoes, man. Like so I haven't really, you know, made it to a level where I'm like, ah, this is what YouTubers should be doing that are starting now. But um, if I could say anything, it would be make sure that you're authentic with the content that you're creating. Um, the big thing for me is an audience can detect whether or not you are genuinely enjoying yourself in terms of the gaming aspect or whether you're just putting it on for them. So they value authenticity more than you think. I have I have 10 goals written, like 10 uh, steps that I kind of live my wife by, written down like everywhere in my room. It's like 360 if I look around, I've got this uh, 10 steps written down. And one of the steps is risk being yourself. And it kind of is a risk every now and then to be yourself because you do need to let people into a bit of a vulnerable side from time to time. But you have to have authenticity when you're doing any kind of art. So I, I'd say if you're doing it um, just for views or whatever, you're not, you, might, you might get the views, but you're not going to have longevity or make, an, or make a decent connection with an audience that you would if you're being authentic. The other thing I'd say is persistence. You know, I've been doing this for eight years now and I've seen the best side of YouTube. I've seen the worst side of YouTube as well. I've had the, I've had the ebbs and flows in my, my YouTube career, if you want to call it that. So, you know, persistence is key. Um, but make sure that when you are persisting with it, that when you're going through those slums, that your quality remains high, that you're, you're not 
bringing negative energy or anything into the recordings that you're doing. And I know, like, sometimes it's really hard to do and sometimes you can't really help but kind of uh, come off as a little bit negative when you're going through rough stuff. Like, you're going to go through that. The problem is when you're going through, like, the ebbs and flows of this business, if you're in a down period, I think it's... If you're, if you're doing videos and every... Every week there's videos where you have down energy in it. Maybe take that step back because you don't want quality to be affected. The other thing I'd say is don't get into this business for the wrong reason. You know, I know that like a lot of people look at uh, people like Jake Paul and everyone and they see money and celebrity as, as a big way and a big reason to get into this. Don't do it for that, because if you're going to do it for that, you know, that's a one in a million chance. You know, for any YouTuber that's trying to start off, it's a one in a million chance that you're actually going to make it. Make it on the platform to the point where you can live off it and call it your job. It's a one in a million chance, you know, so don't get into it for those reasons of money and seeking fame and all that stuff, because... Nine times out of ten, it does not work out that way. And that's just the nature of the business. And the final thing I would say is listen to your audience. Your audience, as I said earlier, are the biggest part of what you do. So treat them right, they will treat you right in return. That's probably the best advice I could give. (laughs) No, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Oh, 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 you lost me a long, long time ago. The father bruises began to show. You lit the fire.